Hello and welcome to another video from the Tradelands Nation. This is our monthly world report. As always, we start today with a look at the economy. As of the closing bell, on April 30th, the MNG index closes at 25.312, a loss of 5.42%. This is an expected finish for the index, as the April Fool's release saw a significant uptick in demand for iron and other cladifying materials, with a steady drop-off in prices occurring once those items went off sale. Inversely, the JSI index is up 1.5%, closing at 15.548, a gain of 231 points. This index is riding the hype for the upcoming release, which has so far been heavily focused on changes to ship mechanics as well as a steady addition of new permanent options to the shipwright, which is driving up the demand for wood across the board. Finally, the earnings index ends only slightly on a down note, closing at 51 to 60, down 303 points or half a percent. The sudden drop at the end of the month is an indicator that players are starting to sell items at discounts to gather additional doubloons or even pulling out of the market altogether because they are saving doubloons instead of spending them. This phenomenon is not uncommon. The last time we saw something like this at a similar scale was back in December. And that's when the winter release came out slightly later than expected, causing a similar dip in the market. While in the real world, this is often viewed as a sign of a potential market collapse, in the context of trade lands and the typical schedule for releases within the game, it should actually be viewed as an indicator of how much extra interest there will be in the market. Drop-offs like this act as a kind of spring or a rubber band in terms of how it rebounds once people start buying and selling again. That's because those holding out will have more spending capital once the release happens. This is assuming that the usual accompanying items are released as well, such as crates, raw materials, ships, craftables, and of course, special events. One of the biggest changes that we are anticipating is the changes to houses. In fact, you may have noticed that we are coming to you today dockside, and that is due to us being unsure of the exact release date as of recording this video. If you visit Mallorca, there is a new stone platform which shows several variations of the new houses. None of these are accessible though, and you will get the same experience by just walking up the lane in Nova Balrasca. It's fairly underwhelming, so know that before you spend your time swimming over here. As of now, it looks like the new system will work like this. When you walk up to a doorway, you will be given the opportunity to purchase a house if it is vacant. Once you do, players can access your house as though they were going to the landlord and selecting you from the list of options. Once you enter, the game determines if your house template matches the house attached to the doorway. If it is, your house will be inserted into the frame, much like it does for the inns that are scattered around the map today. If your house template is different than the house attached to the doorway, then you will instead be teleported to your house in the same way that it works today. This means the new changes are in addition to the current system, not a change. Moreover, it means that there is potential for shop owners to place shops on popular trade locations, a likely game changer for how they work today, assuming that they are affordable, of course. But while we wait for this release, other important changes are happening across the world of trade lands. The war with Hershovia continues. The beleaguered garrison at Clydesdale has fended off multiple amphibious assaults, allowing Prashovia to maintain a launching point for its future counteroffensive across the Grand Isles. The Allied commanders realized that the Prashovian ground forces were beyond the capability of even the most elite Novan Marine regiments, meaning any territory lost to Prashovia was likely lost forever. Chancellor Lostic deduced that their only hope of victory would be to beat the Prashovians at sea. And for this, they dispatched their fleets and waited for the inevitable. It was at this moment when the war entered its most crucial stage, Prashovia unleashed its secret weapon. On a hidden island deep within the Prashovian territories, an ominous glow emanated from one of its obsidian towers. They had unleashed the Dimensional Shift, a weapon that can alter the very fabric of Robloxian physics. In the Grand Isles, crews began to slide off their ships. Soldiers felt the shudder of their islands as they shook in an unholy vibration whenever they drew a sword. It was as if the very heart of the world was telling them to capitulate. 
the sliding war it had begun. Prashovia knew they had disabled the entire military defending the trade lands. In their desire to take revenge in a single swift stroke, they launched a three-pronged attack towards Cannoneer's Key, Harrisburg, and a third relief force moving to eliminate the fleet surrounding Clydesdale. The tendrils of the Prashovian Federation snaked their way through the trade lands, ready to devour every nation that stood in their way. But then, as though by some miracle, it all changed. Historians would later recount that the inevitable victory sparked an age-old political rift within Prashovia. While the details remain sketchy, it is said that a new leader of Prashovia was elected with the intention of dividing the spoils among the various political factions. But he was betrayed by one of his own. Wishing to be the hero of his own story, his vice admiral sought the glory of victory for himself, and after a vote of no confidence failed, this vice admiral retreated back into his obsidian tower, where he turned off the machine that he had created. Many would later recall the last transmission as the machine that rocked the world went silent, a whisper across the night, Avenge 2334, a cryptic message whose true meaning may never be decoded or understood. Regardless of the truth of this message, the impact in the Grand Isles was real. As the first Pershovian fleet approached Cannoneer's Key, assured of their victory, seeming to ignore the opposition, King Zack knew the moment the dimensional doorway had closed, as he could feel the strength returning to him as the physics of the world returned to normal and his crews manned their ships. Taking advantage of the situation, he maneuvered his fleet to cross the T of the incoming Prashovian fleet and annihilated them. It was in this moment that the soldiers of Prashovia must have sensed their worst nightmare was coming to life. By splitting their massive armada into three separate groups, they had actually lost their numerical superiority. With the defeat at Cannoneer's Key or Reality, it was possible that they would lose every single battle to come. The ships at Harrisburg knew that victory was a must, for their very survival was at stake. And here, Prashovia won a clean victory, wiping out the entire allied force, including the garrison on Harrisburg. What was left was the Battle of Clydesdale. The balance of the entire war hinged on the outcome. If the two Pershovian transport ships broke through the blockade, the aftermath would be a constant push into the heart of the Grand Isles, with momentum so strong that no force could stand in their way. But against them was a small reserve fleet. King Zack's depleted force, still recovering from their victory at Cannoneer's Key, would not be able to make it to Clydesdale in time. So Chancellor Lostick knew it was up to him and his five remaining ships that were still on station. Would it be enough to stop Prashovia, or was the battle lost before it even began? After losing the initiative and in the early stages due to poor performance of their mortar fire, it would redeem itself as the Prashovian forces approached the docks and realized they had fallen into an allied trap. The chaos of battle would ensue until the moment when everything changed. The Prashovian lead ship slipped beneath the waves after an intense battering. Behind them, the entire battle line split in two to avoid the wreckage. The Allies saw their advantage and capitalized on the mistake. The first transport to go down was the Kirin. Surrounded and alone, it launched a last-ditch ramming attempt, one which would never come to be. The Chancellor, seeing the opportunity before him, counterattacked, boarding the Prashovian warships, turning the odds permanently in their favor. And in the end, with no other option, the last transport ship carrying a newly minted marine regiment attempted to board the Allied warships, and they were crushed. It was over. 
As the last Prashovian ship began to sink beneath the waves, the crew could only look on to Clydesdale. They had come so far, only to fail here when they were so close, unable to relieve the garrison which had held on for entire month. This was where it would end for them. When King Zack finally linked up with Chancellor Lostick, the two leaders would successfully end the occupation at Clydesdale. While it has been a costly win, it was an important one. For the Grand Isles was safe for now, but how long would it last? With the Allied forces heavily engaged and exhausted, it seemed as though the future of the Tradelands may instead be in the hands of one man. King Jack, recently installed as the Pirate King of Blackwind Cove, had a choice in front of him. Prashovia was sure to counterattack. It remains unknown if the Prashovian dimensional shift could ever be reactivated, but the only way to permanently remove this threat would be to launch a surprise raid to disable it. Would the Pirate King, who still had his detachments and commandos available to him, launch a raid into the heart of the Prashovian Federation in what may be the boldest and most daring act ever recorded in the history of this game, to ensure now and always that the Grand Isles is free to pursue its own dreams and ambitions? Or would he sit idly and watch the war progress before Prashovia ultimately outlaws the acts of piracy and removes all of the trade lanes and trade lands, effectively ending the game forever. Is King Jack the greatest hero of this story or its worst villain? We may have to wait until next month to find out. So until that time, be safe out there everyone and happy trading.